why the Minnesota Golden Gophers basketball team is building it the right way. Then we talk Zaquan Bryan, newest commit to the Golden Gophers football program. And finally, what the Gophers need to do to keep up with college athletics moving forward. That here on Locked On Golden Gophers. Locked On Golden Gophers, your daily podcast on the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into the Locked On Golden Gophers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Kane Rob. I am host of the podcast, former collegiate video coordinator and recruiting assistant. Happy to be here with you all. Be sure to tune into the podcast wherever you stream your podcast, whether that be Apple Pods, iTunes, Spotify, or any other streaming platform. Be sure to follow Locked On Golden Gophers. Also, be sure to follow us at LO Golden Gophers on Twitter. We do a mailbag every Thursday, and I'd love to have your questions and topics you want to talk about on that Twitter account. Now, let's get started into this first topic, which is why the Golden Gophers basketball team is doing this the right way, why they are building the right way. And I believe this is true because as it currently stands, if we can pull Dawson Garcia, who is the latest name in the transfer portal that has a large interest and connection with the Minnesota Golden Gophers, he would be our seventh scholarship player from Minnesota. Now, those six that are on the roster currently include Pharrell Payne, Braden Carrington, Josh Ola Joseph, Jamison Battle, Parker Fox, and Trayton Thompson. Now, I had someone respond to me saying, I'll care when they start winning. But here's the thing. This change in the recruiting and how local prospects see us can help lead to that winning. I mean, let's just look at some of the top Minnesota prospects over the past five years. And I'm talking prospects that have contributed to their major programs in a huge way. Some of them even moving on to the NBA after college. In 2021, we had Chet Holmgren, the number one prospect in the nation, who went to Gonzaga, Minnesota kid. And then we also had Will Shetter, who was a Michigan commit. Both of those guys are playing with major programs, and Chet Holmgren took the college basketball world by storm help lead his team at least into the later rounds of the tournament and contributed to a number one rated team for a lot of the season. Then you look at 2020 Jalen Suggs, who also committed to the Gonzaga Bulldogs. Dawson Garcia, who initially committed to Marquette, then moved on to North Carolina. You have Dane Danger, who went to Baylor, who went on to win a national championship and then has now transferred to Illinois. And then Ben Carlson, who went with the Badger, who went and committed with the Badgers, has now entered the portal. And Kerwin Walton at North Carolina, who in his freshman season lit up the ACC from deep and was an absolute stud as a freshman, although his minutes dwindled this second year and Gophers fans are hoping he will enter the portal himself, he was a great player, especially his freshman year. Now, 2019, we're looking at Matthew Hurt, who played for Duke and contributed with them for two years. Then you have Zeke Naji, who played at Arizona and is now a Denver Nugget, but he also contributed a large portion to Arizona's success in his freshman season. Tyrell Terry, who played at Stanford and also contributed a lot in his freshman season, again, helping the Stanford basketball team have success. And he also has moved on to the NBA, got drafted, I believe, in the second round. But these are guys all coming from Minnesota. You have Tyler Wall, who was with the Badgers and contributed. David Roddy, who went to Colorado State 
and was actually the Mountain West Player of the Year this past season to a Colorado State team that also qualified for the tournament. Now, they got knocked out early in the tournament, got upset, but still a contributing player. That's just looking at the past three seasons. Now, another two after that, I said we were going to look at the last five seasons. We have Trey Zone, yeah, Trey Jones, excuse me, played for Duke. Played on a fantastic Duke team that got knocked out in the Elite Eight. Played with guys like Zion, RJ Barrett, Cam Reddish. But then also came back his second year at Duke and was one of the top scorers on the team one of the top assist men on the team trey jones fantastic player out of minnesota but in that same class with trey jones was we where we had minnesota uh commits oturu omersa and kasher those three guys all committed to stay home and that is where we saw our brief tournament entry with the golden gophers playing with a guy, Amir Coffey as well. 2017, you had Jericho Sims, who played at Texas, contributed contributed to teams that played in the tournament, started games. Nate Reavers and Brad Davison at the Wisconsin Badgers. Now I know Brad Davison is not a name you want to hear, you want to talk about as being a success in college basketball, but he contributed a lot. He may have been a dirty player, May have had his issues, but he contributed a lot. And Nate Reavers held his own, especially in his early seasons as well. Race Thompson, still playing with Indiana, has been contributing with that team for the past three seasons. Theo John played with Marquette, had a couple tournament runs, transferred to Duke, went to the Final Four this past season, contributed in big spots. Great rebounder. Great defensive presence, great blocks, great dunks. His teammate in high school, point guard McKinley Wright, absolute baller, played for the Colorado Buffs. Single-handedly, maybe not single-handedly, but huge and main contributor on that team that made it to the tournament. Would have made it to two tournaments had we not had the COVID shutdown. All of these guys in the last five years, Minnesota prospects. So when we say that it is big that we are keeping at-home talent and we're getting some of these guys who left two major programs, i.e. Dawson Garcia, who hopefully will be contri- or will be committing to the Golden Gophers soon here, if we can get those type of guys to want to be a part of what is building here, that is going to be major, absolutely major. That is going to help us move forward to winning. So when I get comments like, I'll care when we win, that's the time to care is now. We're keeping our in-state talent. And this isn't even mentioning guys of the past 10 years. Quentin Hooker, who went to North Dakota, led that team single-handedly to the tournament, almost upset a one or two seed in the first round. Plays professionally overseas now. Tyus Jones, most outstanding player, won a national championship, playing in the NBA, debatably, and I say he is, debatably, the best backup point guard in the NBA. Reed Travis played for Stanford, then transferred his graduate season to Kentucky with a great tournament team, playing overseas professionally. J.P. Makura, absolute stud for Xavier Led them to a couple tournament runs, played in the NBA briefly, and is playing overseas now. These guys are all Minnesota talents. So we need to embrace the fact that we are keeping our guys at home. And we're going to keep diving into this talk about uh, recruiting and keeping guys at home because I've single-handedly experienced this on the football side, be that, but it plays across the board when you're talking recruiting, which is what we're going to talk next. First, I want to talk to you about our friends over at Built Bar. See, Built Bar is covered in 100% real chocolate. That's right, 100% real chocolate, and it tastes better than a candy bar. You can replace your candy bars with a Built Bar. 
and it's better for you. I mean, most candy bars are about three to 400 calories with a whole bunch of sugar. Just not good for you. It's not doing good things for your body. But Built Bars, only 130 calories, four grams of sugar, four grams of net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. I take these all the time after my workouts. They they leave me refreshed. They taste great. My favorite, mint brownie. It tastes like a Girl Scout thin mint cookie, except for it's good. It's not terrible for me. It leaves me in a good spot. So definitely give that a look. And if you, that sounds good to you, go over to built.com and use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off your order. Again, go over to built.com and use code LOCKED15 for 15% off at built.com. Welcome back in, and thanks for making Locked On Golden Gophers your first listen every day. Now for a big announcement. Starting Thursday, April 28th, tune in to Locked On NFL Draft's live coverage of the 2022 NFL Draft with all three days of real-time analysis from our extensive lineup of experts and insiders. And for those of you dying to know who your team will take, catch Audacity and Locked On's NFL Mock Draft special hosted by Brian Peacock and former scout Matt Williamson of Peacock and Williamson NFL Show all week leading up to the first pick. Where can you find this? You can find it at the Locked On NFL Draft Live or at Audacity NFL Mock Draft. When will this be happening? It'll be April 28th, 7 p.m. Eastern, April 29th, 6.30 Eastern, and April 30th at 11.30 Eastern. Be sure to check that out. And again, thank you for tuning in today to Locked On Golden Gophers. Now, as I said, we're going to keep talking about recruiting, and I'm going to give you a little bit more of an insight on what recruiting really is like behind the scenes, especially when it pertains to the basketball team that we were just talking about. See, recruiting is all about the development of relationships. It isn't just, oh, you talk to a kid during their junior year, you show some interest, you're like, hey, you're really good, you throw down an offer and you get him. You know, that's what the NCAA video games have kind of skewed people's mindsets into thinking. But it's a much, much more extravagant, intensive, longer process than that. You see, coaches are oftentimes, depending on the sport and NCAA regulations, coaches are oftentimes talking to these students, their freshmen, sophomore years in high school. Sometimes even earlier than that, seventh, eighth grade, depending again on NCAA regulations and the sport you're in. Like, Amir Coffey had flat out said that he, Ben Johnson was part of the reason he came to the Gophers when Ben Johnson was an assistant coach who helped out in recruiting and that Ben Johnson had been in communication and had a relationship building with Amir Coffey since seventh or eighth grade. Those relationships go a long way. I mean, you get to talking to these guys as freshmen, sophomores, again, sometimes earlier. And that relationship lasts with those kids sometimes beyond the kid even possibly committing. Like they could commit to another school and still have that relationship with you that you guys built. Now, you can't reach out and then talk to them saying, hey, come here. or Hey, you can't reach out to them. As a coach, you cannot reach back out to them. But... If that commit comes to you and asks you questions after they've already committed to another school, they come and ask you about life. They come to ask you about your family and how things are going. You can respond to them then. And there's a lot of kids that have developed those relationships with scouts in different areas, different programs that have that type of relationship that they still check in on their family, on how they're doing. That's how close these relationships, the good programs the good scouts, the good recruits, that's how good of a relationship they end up building. Heck, sometimes if you have a coach 
that has a relationship and the kid will sometimes say, and this has happened in my past work experience, the kid will say, I will commit to you because I value our relationship. You might be a lower program. You might be a lower offer. Now, typically lower offers, it might be more difficult. Money plays into a lot of things. But I've literally heard recruits say, I like our relationship so much. I look forward to working with you. I want to come to your program. And you might not get that kid. Because there's a lot more things at play and at stake. You might not be the final person that gives a stamp of approval to be able to even offer that kid. So you've built this relationship for months and months, and then you bring it to your head coach or whoever is in charge of the final say of giving that offer. And they're like, no, we don't need that person. Oh, we're looking a different direction. And you've built all that up. And then you have to somehow, you can't just let that kid down. Can't just say, oh, we're not interested because what happens if that coach changes his mind? Says, oh, that kid you told me about, let's offer him three weeks later. But you told the kid we are no longer interested, so he moved on. See, the game of recruiting is all about relationships. And it's it's a crazy game. I've seen firsthand guys commit to D1 FCS and sometimes FBS programs that have said, I would have came to your D2 school because of the relationship we built, but we never offered them because the person, the decision makers in that program didn't think there was a real shot or they thought they'd be poached by another bigger program, which they could have been. But that's the problem with recruiting. And so it's not necessarily a problem, but that shows the value of doing recruiting right can go a long way, tying it back to what we were saying with the Minnesota local prospects wanting to play here. The fact that we brought in three freshmen in this upcoming class that have Minnesota ties, the fact that we got Jamison Battle back when he entered the transfer portal, the fact that Dawson Garcia is interested and coming back due to his given circumstances. Guys like Josiah Strong from Illinois State, senior shooting, shooting guard, I should say. Senior shooting guard, great shooter. Champlain Park, Minnesota. They're in talks and discussions. Davidson Guard, I believe he's from Woodbury, Minnesota. Michael Jones in talks with Minnesota. Those guys have played on programs. They've contributed. They've shown they can play at the level. And they're interested in coming back because they see what is building here. That is special. That is important. And keeping those type of relationships is going to be the next step to holding on to those top guys we listed earlier. Guys like Tyus Jones, Trey Jones, Matt Hurt, Jalen Suggs, Chet Holmgren, Those guys were all number one players in the state of Minnesota that we lost out on to bigger programs. But if we build the culture, the foundation that people want to stay home, they see the success, and these recruits start finding NBA success, Amir Coffey, start finding NBA success from coming from the Gophers program. That can be a game changer. And if Ben Johnson is developing in that manner, then we need to be patient. We need to be all on board. That's what we're seeing with PJ Fleck on the football side of things, how he's building culture. We're getting guys to the draft. Rashad Bateman. Tyler Johnson. There's so much potential when you build it the right way. So Gophers fans, be patient and trust in the coach. We've had our fair share of coaches that don't get it done. Heck, Coach Patino wasn't about keeping in in, in state talent here. My father was a coach at Champlain Park High School where McKinley Wright, Theo John played basketball. McKinley Wright was interested in the Gophers at one point in a time, but when he felt like he was getting sloughed off, he started looking elsewhere. Patino didn't have the interest to keep kids in state, keep that 
MN prep basketball in house. And we lost out on guys, great, talented players. Ben Johnson has the right idea and he's doing it right. We need to be patient. Recruiting is about relationships. And these relationships that he's building, it seems, are going in the right direction. Now, we're going to close the show with our most recent football commit, Zaquan Bryan. Uh, I said we were going to touch on what the Gopher program needs to do to stay growing in the future. We'll touch on that tomorrow. But Zaquan Bryan will close the show with next after a word from our friends at Bet Online. Bet Online is your number one source for all betting stats and sports information. If you're interested in knowing what is the news, the latest news, the latest numbers for your NBA basketball playoffs that have been off to a hot start as of recent, or not your thing, Major League Baseball just started. You like baseball? Interested in the numbers and the betting stats? Towards baseball, check it out at Bet Online because Bet Online is your continued source for all sports wagering information from the playoffs to esports to live betting and more. Head to the website today and make sure to use your mobile device to learn about more about the trends and actions. Bet Online, where the game starts. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Locked On Golden Gophers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. We just got this thing over and running over at YouTube. So if that is your preferred method to watch the podcast with the video streaming platform, be sure to check us out over there. In time, we're going to be having guests come through. We're going to try to bring some players on, maybe some other analysts for the Gophers. Coaches, we'll see. I'm going to try to do what I can to make this show better for you. So be sure to tune in wherever you stream. Be sure to check us out over on YouTube. We're getting these things figured out. You know, it's a new process. The video is going to get bigger and better. Hopefully it starts off not too shabby, but you have to look at this mug. So, I mean, that could be a bad thing. Who knows? Of course. I want to finish off the show with recent and most latest Gophers recruit commit Zaquan Bryan, 2023 defensive back. He was the fourth overall commit in the class of 2023 for the Gophers. We have two O-linemen, Reese Tripp and Jerome Williams. Then we have one running back, Darius Taylor, who we mentioned on a previous episode. And now Zaquan Bryan of Georgia. The 247 non composite rankings has him as a three star cornerback and the number 52 cornerback in the nation. He's 5'11, 180 pounds, again from Georgia. Other offers he had include North Carolina, which was a big steal for us, Army, Central Michigan, and Coastal Carolina, just to name a few. Things that pop off with Zaquan Bryan is he's fast. He is very fast and he is athletic. He ran the 100 meter dash. He's also a track athlete. 100 meter dash this season, this spring in 10 seconds, 10.95 seconds. The Georgia high school state record is 10.26 seconds. He's encroaching. Now I know that's seven tenths of a second still. That is fast. He's a multi-sport athlete, played baseball, basketball, and track. He had 51 tackles, two interceptions, and seven pass breakups. Also played wide receiver where he had 95 receptions for 1,376 yards, and he had 17 total touchdowns, some of those being interception returns. The thing that really popped off when I was watching his tape is that he has the natural instincts to find and track the ball. He isn't afraid of contact. He will lay a smack down on somebody from the D-back position. Those type of D-backs are dangerous. Not dangerous in a sense of not good for the game, but dangerous in a sense of you have to be on the lookout for those type of players. 
when you're on the offensive side of the ball, when you're game planning. So that is something I'm extremely looking forward to with the growth and development of this new commit. He also has breakaway speed. As we said, he's very fast. And watching some of his interception returns for touchdowns, even his on the receiving side of the ball, some of his rece- reception touchdowns, the guy takes off. His breakaway seed is ridiculous. You love to see it. You love that kind of talent being added. Yes, he's only a three-star commit, but that type of three-star star commit is what makes the good programs great. When you get three-star guys like this who have dog mentality, who have the speed, and who have the will to be there, the passion to play, and the intangibles of a more highly rated prospect, that's what makes a good program great. The fact that North Carolina was in on this guy, North Carolina developing ACC program that has been taking off under the direction of their coach. Becoming an ACC power. They were interested in this guy. They offered this guy. Wanted to come to the Gophers. Something you love to see. Last thing I want to touch on with him is that he is a good open field tackler, which is something that I always try to look for when I'm watching those players that have played both sides of the ball. He played receiver and he played D-back, but we're bringing him in as a defensive back. So you always get concerned that those guys maybe shy away from contact or don't know how to make an open field tackle on their own. The guys that dive and miss, the guys that try to whack tackle and aren't strong enough to take a def- or an offensive player down. But this guy, he can lay a punishment down. It's tem- typically something you don't even see from guys that are solely playing the D-back level- position at the high school level. So the fact that he can do that, the fact that he can make good open field tackles on his own, is already setting himself up for success in the future. So I look forward to Zaquan Bryan joining the Gophers team. I'm sure we'll touch on him again in a future episode, maybe wrapping up all the commits when it comes to that time later next year. I just want to thank you all again for tuning into the Locked On Golden Gophers podcast and making it your first listen every day. Again, this is the show where we always continue to row Now, make your second listen locked on NFL Draft. Ryan Tracy and former NFL cornerback Eric Crocker bring the NFL Draft to life every day with insight and analysis on college football prospects and NFL front offices. It's free and available wherever you get podcasts. This is Kane Robb with the Locked On Golden Gophers podcast. We're going to call this one a wrap. Thank you for tuning in. Check us out wherever you get your podcasts and leave a five-star review. We'd really appreciate it. If you have positive, constructive feedback, send them my way. I will look at them and hopefully make this show what you want to hear it. If you're on the new YouTube, leave some comments. I mean, don't be a jerk, but leave some comments. I'll take a look at those. We're going to grow this thing. If you have friends that are Gophers fans, bosses that are Gophers fans, coworkers, family members, Tell them about the podcast. We got a mailbag episode coming up on Thursday. Wednesday, we will do our second version of Guess That Gopher, which is a great game. If you haven't checked it out, check out last week's episode. We're going to have a fun time with that. Tomorrow, we're going to break down the offense of Golden Gophers football. Until then, I'll see you. Kane Rob, take it easy.